Hi guys, can we tell what the topic of today's video is by any chance based on this stack of books I have here? Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video because we are going to be talking about one of my favorite authors ever and that is Penelope Douglas. Oh. Penelope's books were the first books I started reading when I got into romance. I have been obsessed with their writing ever since. And so I had the idea a while ago to do like a guide to Penelope Douglas. And then I started seeing people do the like ranking every Colleen Hoover book. And I was like, oh, I also want to do that for, for Penelope because I've read all of their books. So today we are kind of combining those two ideas and I'm going to be tier ranking all of Penelope's books and at the same time giving you the reading order, telling you what books are linked. Okay, I have the screen recording going. This is my tier. I have literally just searched up Penelope Douglas on the tier website and found this one. I'll also link it below if you guys want to do this. So Penelope has three series and like standalones and one of those series is a spin-off to the other. So it's like two connected series, one other series, and then some standalones. Does that make sense? So the first series we have is the Fall Away series, which is Bully Until You, Rival, Falling Away, A Flame, Next to Never, and then Adrenaline. And then the spin-off to that is the... What is that series called? Is the Hellbent series, which as of right now is just Falls Boys, and then the rest aren't out yet. And then there's the Devil's Night series, which is Corrupt, Hideaway, Kill Switch, Conclave, Nightfall, and Fire Night. And then there's a bunch of standalones. So I just wanted to start with that, and now we'll just get into it. So starting with the first series, which is the Fall Away series. The first book is Bully, which is about Tate and Jared. And it's like childhood friends to enemies to lovers. So like angsty and like obviously bully romance it's literally called bully it's really good and this is just from Tate's point of view and I'm gonna say that I I don't know whether to put it in loved it or liked it I'm gonna do loved it because I did love it okay then the next one is until you which is the exact same story but told from Jared's point of view and I'm gonna move Bully down to liked it and I'm putting it until you in loved it. I did not think that I would even care about until you. I really didn't. It was so good. It was even better than Bully. Like hearing it all from Jared's point of view and everything from his mind was so good. If you're considering skipping that book, don't. Like read it, I swear. It's incredible. Next is Rival. This is um <laughs> This book's about Maddox and Fallon, so they are technically step-siblings, but they don't live together and they have all this history and then she comes back into town and he's like, why are you here? It's really good. I'm going to put this... But I'm going to put it in Loved It. I might move it up later on. I really, really loved Maddox. Then we have Falling Away, which is about Jackson and Casey. And Casey is like Tate's best friend, and Jax is Jared's little brother. I'm just gonna put this in meh. I honestly didn't really like it. But I definitely didn't hate it. I just didn't really like it that much. I don't really love Jax as a character, which I know is such an unpopular opinion because he's most people's favorite. Then we have A Flame, which is a continuation of Tate and Jared's story, which is the first couple. I'm putting this in God tier. That book was so good. I love it even more than Bully and Until You. It was so good. Again, if you have read the series and you've thought about skipping A Flame, don't. Don't. Then we have Next to Never, which I'm honestly going to put in... I think it was a really cool idea though. I think I'm gonna put it in Loved It. So Next to Never is set like a few years after 
the Fall Away series. It's basically set at the same time as when the Hellbent series is set. It just came out a while ago. But it's about like their younger sister. And she is like going through school and she's friends with all of their kids because she's the same age. So you get glimpses of their kids, which is the, se the, car the cast, the characters in the Hellbent series. And she finds, she gets this book mailed to her and she starts reading it and everything and it turns out that it's the love story of her parents. So it's, you're getting her life and her feelings and she doesn't really have a love story going on, she kind of just is like going through things and she's then like reading so you get the other perspective which is her parents when they were young and first meeting and like why it failed and why it didn't work out the first time and it's so good. Penelope's mind is so brilliant. Next we have Adrenaline which is like a series of short stories and like bonus scenes for I think it's just for Jared and Tate. I don't think it's for the rest of the cast. I haven't read that. I don't really go back and read like when authors release bonus scenes because I'm like okay well I've already like finished that book. Okay so that is all for the Fall Away series. Okay, and then we move on to the Hellbent series, which, like I mentioned, is the spin-off to the Fall Away series. So it's about the kids, the characters from the Fall Away series, right? So the only one that's out so far is Falls Boys, and I am god tier. God tier. I, I loved that book so much. The characters were incredible. One of my favourite reads of last year. Then these are all unreleased, so I'm just going to put these here because we don't even really know what they're all about or the characters in them. But so good. Okay, next up we have two standalones that are that have crossovers with the Fall Away slash Hellbent series. Okay, so we have Credence. Let's just get this over over and done with. I'm gonna put it in Loved It. I'm not even going to explain what Prince is about. If you don't know, that's good for you. So the crossover is that one of the main guys in Credence, he ends up going to work for one of the parents from the Hellbent series, so one of the characters from the Fall Away series. And they get really close. And I think he's going to be mentioned a lot more in the Hellbent series as the series goes on. So that's the connection there. And you can read it like whenever, there's not really any sort of timeline or anything. I feel like I would recommend reading Fall Away series and then Credence and then the Hellbent series. But it's not necessary. You're not really going to be missing out on anything. Then we have Misconduct. Now this, I had no idea was going to be linked to the Hellbent series, but I saw someone else say this and I can't find a confirmation. I can't find anywhere that Penelope has said this, but I've seen I think two people say this. And I'm very hopeful about it because Conduct is about an ex-tennis star who becomes a teacher and this guy who he's like a lot older and he's not a lot, he's a bit older and he's like running for some sort of uh, some sort of political role and they meet like six months prior at a masquerade ball they have all this like chemistry and tension and then they just like don't really get each other's names they don't know anything they both leave and then six months later she ends up being his son's ninth grade teacher and they like meet again and they're like oh my gosh but then she's his kid's teacher so it's like oh we probably shouldn't do anything and it's incredible i loved this book i'm definitely putting that in loved it and apparently I don't know if it's going to be the guy's kid or if maybe they go on to have kids, but somehow one of the characters is going to be linked in the Hellbent series, allegedly, and I hope so because I loved the world of misconduct and if that is linked to the Fall Away world, I'm going to be so happy. But for now, this is the whole Fall Away Hellbent universe, okay? This is this. She's beautiful. We love her. Moving on to the next series, we have the Devil's Night series, which is a much darker series than the Fall Away series, and a lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it. Personally, the series as a whole, I really, really like. 
you know, there is also one standalone which crosses over into this and I think is really important to read. But like, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but I think it's important. So the series, the first book in the series is Corrupt, which is about Michael and Rika. Basically, I'll just give you an overview of the series. Basically, there's these four guys who are the four horsemen and they celebrate this thing called Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween. And they basically like, ditch school, they go, they like cause havoc, they play pranks, but like extreme pranks, like burning buildings down and that kind of thing. They throw parties, they just do crazy stuff. And one year, a bunch of stuff goes wrong and they, I don't know if that's a spoiler, I hope not, but they all get into a lot of trouble. And each of the books is basically about the guys and their girlfriends. And a lot of them did some bad stuff in their past involving the girls and like look they're just like not good people and that's why a lot of people don't like these books but personally I think they do redeem themselves and it is such a crazy series the family lines and like everything going on behind the scenes is insane like so crazy but I love this series. Corrupt, however, Corrupt is either, Corrupt is going to go in meh. Because I read it and I was like, hmm, that was disappointing, but I'm going to continue the series anyway. So I clearly didn't hate it, but it was meh. And those two are probably my least favorite characters, unfortunately. Next up, we have Hideaway, which my favorite girl, it's the horseman and the cowgirls, my favorite cowgirl is the main character of Hideaway. I love her, thanks, well. But the guy, <laughs> he's probably my second least favorite. I feel like him and Michael are tied as my least favorite horseman. But I do like this book and I'm putting it in liked it. Now comes in when you need to read the standalone. If you want to read it in like timeline order, personally I read Punk 57 first and then the Devil's Night series like a few months later you could read it the Devil's Night series and then read Punk 57 after but I would recommend reading it in timeline order because it's what will make most sense so after you read Corrupt and then Hideaway you should read Punk 57 which is a standalone it's like friends to enemies to lovers kind of but they're pen pals and they don't know who each other are um I'm gonna put this in loved it because I did love it I did but that book, in that book, you get the Four Horsemen make a special appearance, and I love it. And then also in the last few books of the Devil's Night series, the two main characters, Misha and Ryan, from Punk 57, become really important characters in the Devil's Night series, if that makes sense. After that is Kill Switch, which is Damon's book, and I love him, and I'm putting this in, loved it. I don't even care. Then we have Conclave, which I'm gonna put in meh. It's a novella. It's really, really important to read before Nightfall. It gives a lot of background into what's gonna happen in Nightfall, and I feel like it would be really confusing to just skip that. But it was just meh. It wasn't anything special. I enjoyed it, but then we have Nightfall. This is going in God tier. I love this book. It's very different than the rest of the Devil's Night series. Like, it's a different setting and everything but I loved it. Then Fire Night, which is a final novella when they're all a bit older, they have children, and honestly, honestly, I am gonna put it in Hated It. I didn't hate it, but it was a little bit worse than meh. That's all the series done, okay? Now we just have the standalones left. So we have Birthday Girl, which if you don't know, it's like ex-boyfriend's dad vibes, and it's really good. I'm gonna put this again in Loved it. Then we have Tristix Ven Venom, which is like a sapphic bully romance. And I loved this so much. It was like bad girl, good girl, like popular, and then like from the wrong side of the tracks. It's so good. Like very cliche tropes, but done so well. I'm gonna put it in loved it. I was gonna be brutal and put it in liked it, but I loved it, so I can't do that. 
Then we have Ash City, which I haven't read. It's from an anthology, which is like a collection of a bunch of works from authors. And then we have Motel, which is unreleased, and I have no idea when it's getting released or what it's about, but I need it. This is the final ranking. I hope this helped you if you were confused about which books to read and when and the timelines and if there's any crossovers. Hopefully this was helpful or if you were just wanting to know my thoughts on different Penelope Douglas books, here you go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!